We almost kind of orchestrate everything. So we run jams into each other. So it's basically like, like tonight it'll be like three hours of thinking. And yeah, it's what, never the same way twice yeah. with different yeah. players. And, and different Steve things. loves that. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you, so when you're playing, is it is it like improvisation for you? Yeah, a lot of it. Like you know, like we have the you know the same phrases. I'm going to sing the same phrases over and over again, and the, the chord structures are going to be the same. But as far as anything else goes, it's going to change. You know, well, not even the chord structures. The bass bass might be you know hold down similar in spots but we we change the structures around a lot a lot too but Steve will hold down you know a structure for a while while I paint over it you know like holding up the canvas and then I do the same for him we treat we treat it a lot like jazz does you give each person a chance to solo but we try to go even a little farther with it where Kind of soloing together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're on the same vibe and we're moving at the same time because it creates sounds that, you know, it, you're learning. You're learning all the time. And you, kind of following the groove. Yeah, and, and you're having fun. Yeah, yeah, it's like a spiritual thing. Well, well Steve, is that unique for when you play? Um, yeah, kind of. It's, it's nice to be able to just have a, a, a jam or a groove and, and, uh, Sometimes it's spectacular and sometimes it's less, than less than spectacular. spectacular. <laughs> but when you hit the groove and everybody's right on, you know, you can't beat it. It's the it's the, the best high there is. Well, Jason, how did you develop this style? I don't know. You know, I studied jazz. I started off with blues and then I studied jazz. And it was just kind of one of those things. I found myself in college. I was um, in the practice rooms and I was supposed to be practicing the standards, but I was writing in fine. You know, I was having a lot more interest in seeing how chords move and how music moved than playing the old jazz standards. Although we do play a lot of standards we, when we play yeah, too, we all actually, the time. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we we'll, we'll take a uh, you know like one of the real book tunes or something and like song for my father yeah. or Blue Boss or something like that. But a real book is that? Yeah. What, what is real book? It's oh, the it's fake jazz book that everybody uh, uses. <laughs> okay. The uh, the illegal book. Yeah. But uh. Anyway, uh, and, and we'll kind of switch it up and jam on that, you know, basically what it was meant to do. And uh, yeah. uh, take it in the left field. And, and then bring it back and play the melody like it's supposed to be played and just yeah. change it around. I mean, it takes a, a good listener to, as well as good musicians, it takes a good listener to appreciate what that, what's happening on stage. Yeah, you get, you get people out there a lot of times that really, you know, they're sitting in their intent and they really enjoy it. And you get your Dilber up there that says "Play Freebird." You know, you're like, <laughs> you don't do Freebird. Don't yeah, <laughs> we could, but you know, we could do Sweet Home, but we don't really do stuff like that. It's just do do people ever react to your originals like they do the covers? Yeah, they do a lot. I mean, they do they do a lot more than the covers that we play. You know, a lot of times because that's kind of what I you know force down. Do do you, you choose covers that aren't as good as your originals? <laughs> I, no, no. No, it's just the way we are. I mean, it's the way I am personally as a songwriter. I, I can play my stuff. I, I do other people's stuff the way I interpret it. You know, it's like, you know, it's not necessarily. You know, I don't do it verbatim like they do it. You know, but you know, I, I like blues. You know, and it's, you know, I try to stay along that lines of, you know thinking when I, when I play other people, you know, do it, interpretation, you know, obviously Eric Clapton, when he did Crossroads, it sounded nothing like Robert Johnson's version, yeah. absolutely nothing. You know, the format of anything, I mean, you know, anybody listens to that and says, oh, that sounds just like Robert Johnson, you know. Well, you got me curious, Is uh, at soundproofproductions.net, do yeah. you have covers on that site? No, I don't use people's covers because it's copyright infringement. And they already, you know, a lot of people that I'm playing covers by, they don't need any help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that needs the help. <laughs> so we don't need to give them any more help than <laughs> possible. Uh, you know? Sure, okay. Well, uh, what song is this you're going to finish up with? This is called Seems So Easy. It's a song that was actually written about 15 years ago go by me and a friend named Greg Hathaway in Charlotte, North Carolina, off of 7th Street. Okay. There's Jason Hanley and Steve Jernigan.
Jernigan, live in the WLRN studio. More information at soundproofproductions.net. And you're playing tonight at what time? At South Shores from 7 to 10 o'clock on the corner of Lucerne and Elm Street. What exit off the uh, interstate would that be? You go with that, Steve. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> well, if you're coming from the south, you'd get uh, off at the 6th Avenue south exit and then go uh, to US 1, go north. That's in Palm uh, Beach County, obviously. In Palm Beach County, yeah. Go north to uh, uh, Lucerne, and then turn west, and it would be right there. At South Shores Tavern tonight. Yeah. Well, that, that sounded great, and I look forward Thanks to hearing you Michael. another time. I really okay. appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks for having us on your show. Thanks for coming by. Ooh.